Caleb Williams continues to clap back against some of the things thrown his way. We're going to talk about that, but it's Friday. So most importantly, this episode is mainly built around your voicemails. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host here, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for the day. And so while, you know, the criticisms around Caleb Williams and his game, I, I completely have always said and I've understood that, right? I heck, I was a guy who, again, I've criticized Caleb Williams' game a lot and kind of the turnover prones, the gunslinger mentality, things like that, right? But Caleb Williams, it seems like, is on pace to be drafted by the Chicago Bears number one overall. And that has brought about a lot of criticisms about kind of him personally, more so than what he does or does not do on the football field, which is always kind of a weird thing. And Caleb Williams, who initially responded to somebody on Twitter about the adversity that he's faced a few days ago, well, this is a kind of a more subtle clap back, but he did this. Mm. Well, it's been a long week for you. Lucky you got me, though. Let's see what that phone is. What the phone is? <laughs> Let's see what color the phone is. The wallet is white. The wallet is white. Phone, phone is pink. Case is clear. What the fuck is that? Like? Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your, your girl love them. <laughs> and this is, listen, I've said it before. I like my quarterbacks to have a little bit of an edge and personality to them for sure. And the city of Chicago, Chicago Bears fans, they got a lot to learn about Caleb Williams' personality. And we'll see how that ends up developing and what he shows why he's here. But I think, you know, the, 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 the criticism around Caleb Williams, I love that he owns it, right? Like, for whatever you're going to slight it, whoever you are, if you are that, whoever you are as a person, own it. That's what Dennis Rodman did, uh, right? That's what Prince did. You know, I'm always going to bring up Prince because Prince was a flamboyant motherfucker, but people knew not to test Prince. But it's up to Caleb Williams to prove and silence the doubters by his play on the football field. I've always gone on to say this. You can have all the criticisms about somebody as a person that you want, as long as they're not committing crimes, as long as they're not doing things to kind of take them off the football field because that is their job. All that is neither here nor there. When it comes to Caleb Williams, the biggest thing that he's going to have to show isn't whether his fingernails are painted, yes or no, isn't whether he has a pink phone, yes or no. The biggest criticisms are going to be what does he bring on the football field for the Chicago Bears? That is the most important thing in all of this. What do you bring? How, and, and how do you help solve some of the own issues with your game? Those are things that we're looking at Caleb Williams to show and prove when he comes, uh, you know, to the Chicago Bears. And that's if that's what he does. Right. And so, you know, I get what it comes down to it. There's a lot of questions when you look at the Bears moving away from Justin Fields, not trading and getting the historic haul that so many of us Bears fans talked about, hoped about and dreamed about what you can get back to it. That, that, you know, when it comes down to it, it's up to Caleb Williams to show that the decision that the, that the front office made is end up going to be the right decision for the Chicago Bears. And I'm not going to go too far and see we got some voicemails, of course, on Caleb, because that's usually what people want to talk about. And so when it comes down to it, when you look at the things around Caleb Williams, what does he have to prove uh, for it for in, in over his football career? I won't say necessarily all of it has to be proven in the uh in the first year and his rookie you guys know i've said kind of temper those expectations not for his career and i think a lot of people kind of misunderstand i'm not saying caleb williams shouldn't have absolutely high expectations on his career because he should he's gonna he if he's that quarterback drafted number one overall for a franchise that has been looking and hoping wishing and dreaming for the franchise quarterback for so long oh best believe the expectations for caleb williams is high and he's gonna have to and hopefully he's gonna live up to that over over time but when you look at this this first year, Caleb Williams got some things to show. The flashes are a big thing that he has to show, right? Uh, especially with the weapons that Caleb Williams has now, how they have they formed around him to kind of put him in the best situation to succeed. They have they have assembled a team around him, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Still has some major flaws. The center position is still a question mark, right? Not as big of a question mark because you got you definitely upgraded, but you still don't have that surefire starting level center there. So that's a, definitely a problem there. You've shored up the running back game. You've brought in another tight end to pair with Cole Komet, who was already on the rise. But how Caleb uses those weapons, how the weapons around him help him succeed, and does he does as a, even as a rookie quarterback, does he use those to his detriment, or does he use those to his benefit and still flashes that game making ability? How much does he look like a like a quarterback that can be that franchise quarterback? Right, even in year one, again, 
No, I, I'm not saying that Caleb Williams needs to come in and have a C.J. Stroud type season, which a lot of people have said and kind of thrown at him. There have been some damn good quarterbacks that have had rocky first seasons. But I'm, and I'm not saying that Caleb is, you know, not going to have a rocky season at some way. But how do you grow week after week? That's what we're looking to see week after week. How do you grow? Right. And that's what we what we want to see from Caleb Williams is that growth, the steady development, showing what he can and what that potential is going to be for him. Listen, the Bears gave up. Justin Fields and people. some people are going to look at what they thought the historic call could have been for Caleb Williams. They gave all that up to potentially draft Caleb Williams. And if he's the pick there, which all signs are pointing to, those expectations around him are high. So while I like the fact that he's clapping back at people, things like that or whatever else it is, showing that personality, it all comes down to first, not first, but it all comes down to what do you give on the football field? That's the way that I'm going to judge Caleb Williams. You guys can judge him whether he paints his fingernails, whether his lips are pink or whatever else. I Personally, I'm never going to judge a football player by what, what they have on their lips. You guys are looking too close, in my opinion. But it comes down to what is he going to give on the football field. And if that is, like if he's winning football games for the Chicago Bears and he's showing those glimpses and rounding out to that franchise quarterback we've all so desperately wanted for so long, that's the biggest test. Not going to be what he carries in his pocketbook. Same. Listen, it is what it is there. All right, let's go ahead and get into the most important part of this episode. That is the mailbag. We're going to go ahead and jump into that. This first one, this one's from Marcel. Yo, what's up, CBC? This is your boy, Marcel. You know, it's, it's, I've been a fan since 95, and uh, I'm just tired of the Chicago Bears bullshit. The head coach picking, this QB situation. I mean, if you were to take Bajent, <clears throat> his yards he threw, and and if you add that to Justin uh, Fields' yardage, he would have been around 3,500, 3,400 yards passing, 700 yards rushing. That makes no sense to give up an MVP caliber because those are damn near the same numbers as Lamar Jackson. Now, I'm over the whole Justin Fields thing. I think the Chicago Bears need to be focusing on the future, which is hopefully that's what we're doing. And hopefully we can make the right decisions in this draft because – Personally, personally, I don't think Caleb Williams is the answer. I think we need to trade back the first round pick to the third. We pick and Marvin Harrison Jr. at the third and get Bo Nix at the ninth. For everyone saying that Bo Nix is <clears throat> a shit player, he's old, that's bullshit. He just barely turned 24. He's two years older than Caleb Williams. <clears throat> he was nominated for Heisman. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. He's the quarterback that we need. We need a pocket passer. Someone who can escape the pocket if they need to, who has burners, which is he does. He's shown that. <clears throat> he can throw. He can make tight passes, quick release. He's the guy that we need. He is the guy. <clears throat> and then we go get Frazier at center, use all of our other second picks to get <clears throat> other people to fill. But I just, it just doesn't make sense, man. It does, it just doesn't make sense. And this is what the Bears do, man. I'm trying to stay strong. I'm trying to bear down, but it's kind of hard when we all know the history of the Chicago Bears. This is what they do. This is what they do. They mess it up. We had, we had an opportunity with Justin to get more offensive linemen and be more offensive dominated, but here we go. We're going to go and get a red uh, <clears throat> uh, rushing edge, which is that's cool, but the, the whole point is we need to focus on offense. We need to get offense down. We've never had a time in Chicago Bears history where it was offensive dominated. Like, we need to get more offensive players and offensive opportunities because, dude, defense ain't doing it. Definitely ain't winning us nothing. So, I mean, that's the whole reason why Eberflus got to keep his job was because he got defensive players at the right time towards the end of the year. And that's what made him stay. I mean, I don't understand why we still got Ebers. Eber. All right, saying MVP caliber like that, that's that's a big because stats are one thing. It's not just about stats. It's about how you get them, right? And so, you know, that's one thing. And while I understand your doubt around Caleb Williams, I, in no way am I ever going to say nobody should not have any doubts about Caleb Williams. No, the doubts are, are, are understandable. But it seems like you are putting the expectations for the Bears to do what you think that they should do to do that. And even in, in saying like the high expectations things, again, nobody's not saying that Caleb Williams does not have high expectations over his career. He does. But he still gets to have a rookie season. And there have been some all-time great. Go and look at Peyton Manning. Was Peyton Manning an all-time great quarterback? Go and look at what his rookie season was. So to say that it, you know you, you can have high but yet realistic expectations to start. And the fact of the matter is, 
no matter who, whether it's you say Bo Nix, I don't think anybody's really looking at Bo Nix. I guess you're overlook, overly looking at, in my opinion, just the pocket aspect of it. It's not that, that the Bears just moved on from Justin Fields just because he wasn't a pack, a pocket quarterback. That's not all that they're looking for in that. They're looking at the best overall talent. So I get what you're saying. I get we all have expectations. Make no mistake about it. Everybody has expectations. And hell, I spent most of this, the beginning of this offseason saying I would love to see the Bears keep Justin Fields, and and get uh, more weapons around him and use that number one overall pick. But guess what? That's not the direction that they went in. And so keep second-guessing as much as you say you're over the Justin Fields thing. It's not really. You, and I we're all going to have things we want this franchise to do. But just because they don't want – they they choose not to do what we want doesn't mean it was the wrong decision. We got to see how it's going to play out. So that's the only thing I'm saying with that, Marcel. I get it. I, we're all passionate, and we all care, and we all want to see this team do – what we think is the best thing. But at the end of the day, they don't owe that to us. They just owe to go out there and make the right decision. And if this ends up being the right decision, in five years, we're not going to look back and say, well, you know what? I really wish they would have kept or traded that number one overall pick. If Caleb turns out to who they're going to, who they hope that he's going to turn out to, to be, that's the biggest indicator there. And so, like I said, that you're, every player is going to come in with doubts. And so the doubt around Caleb Williams' games is legit. His actual game on the football field is legit. But let's not act like Bo Nix, for example, who you presented, doesn't have those as well, right? And come on now. Bo Nix is projected to go in the, in, in, at, at the, in the second round. Like, that's what you think is best for this team? I mean, I get it, right? But that's just, to me, that's looking at the raw stats. And, and you got to look at more than just stats, especially in college football, because a lot of things play into that. So, you know, we'll, we'll see, man. And I, listen, I get it. I understand your passion. I understand your fervor. Uh, let's just hope that the front office is getting it right, brother. All right, let's get into the next voicemail. This one is from Jay. Hey, what's going on, gentlemen? It's your boy Jay from San Diego. I'm going to try to keep this quick. Um, I know my opinion ain't popular, but I'm not going to even say I got full faith and confidence in it, but I have been speculating on it for a little bit, and if I'm right, it would be crazy. But I'm starting to believe that the Bears might pump fake on this first overall pick. And the reason I say that is because just looking at how they courting Caleb Williams, how they going about everything. They showed up in full force this pro day. Everybody was there watching them throw, and I don't think they did the same for Jaden Daniels. They took Caleb Williams out to dinner, showed him the stars. I don't think they did the same for Jaden Daniels. I think Caleb Williams is the prospect that all teams really want, and I think nine out of ten drafts, you will see Caleb Williams going number one. But the intriguing part about it is Brian Poe has been calculated this entire time. And on game day, it might just be crazy if he pulled the trigger on the trade to go back to two or three. No, I don't think he's going back to three, my bad. To go back to um, two to take Jaden Daniels off the board to pick up extra picks and end up going with Jaden Daniels. Now, in my opinion, I think that Jaden Daniels currently might be a little bit more of a polished um, product when it comes to um, just some things that I've seen. And I'm not this astute R22 college football studier, so I could be wrong. I ain't trying to dispel nothing. But um, just from what I've seen, I do have a little bit more confidence in Jaden Daniels. But just let me know what y'all think about that, about the pump fake that I think Ryan Poles is doing, and you know what? Even if it is true, I kind of feel stupid coming on here, you know, playing this hand because if it come out to be true, and I tip his hat, you know, and it's kind of get out, it'll be funny. But hey, it is what it is. Hey, y'all, take it easy. I appreciate what y'all are doing. I want to hear y'all talk. Chicago up, bear down. All right, Bears trading back for Jaden Daniels. Listen, I, like you said, I hold nothing outside the realm of possibility with Ryan Poles, but I think you also have to look at what's happening and. I think that all signs are, are pointing to, and the indicators are there, that Caleb Williams is going to be that pick. Now, could Ryan Poles be pulling the, the, the okie doke on everybody of all okie dokes to be pulled? That's an old people saying, by the way. I got that from my father, but hey, judge me not. He's from the South Side. Uh, so, but it comes down to it, man. I think, uh, you know, you got to look at it when, when it comes to Jaden, man. Jaden is an absolutely talented ass quarterback, and do not get me wrong, if the Bears were to kind of pull, uh, 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 okie doke and end up drafting Jaden Daniels. Okay, he's still moving in to a damn good situation, just like we say with Caleb Williams. But I think all signs are pointing to Caleb being the guy. And I get it, we're going to come up with these permutations and other ideas. But I think Ryan Poles is going to have a more straightforward draft 
than what people are expecting. Not to say that something can't happen in trading up, trading into, whatever, but I think that it's going to be a lot more straightforward than what we're kind of used to and accustomed to with Ryan Poles. And take that for what you will. All right, let's get into the next uh, one. This one is from Fred. Hey, yo, hey, what's up, man? It's be your boy, Fred, man. Hey, it's almost that time. We almost close to it. Hey, I was having a conversation with my neighbor, right? Now, check this out. Hear me out. I don't want you to say really kidding. You know, it, it just stopped. Let's say if the Chargers call the Bears and say they want that number one raw pick for their five, it's the pick. And they, give, and, and they give us Justin Herbert. Do you think, like, that would be a good scenario, you know what I'm saying, for the Bears to do because you never know because think about it. The Chargers let go, you know what I'm saying, Keenan Allen, right? They let go Everett, Mike Wynn. It's like they depleted their whole office. They look like they're in a the rebuild stage. So do you think if the Bears decide to say, hey, you know what I'm saying, we want to trade, you know what I'm saying, Justin Herbert, we want that number one pick for y'all, you know what I'm saying, and we'll give y'all some picks in return. Do you think it's possible that something like that happens? Because think about it. We've seen some crazy, weird, bizarre stuff happen during you know, the NFL draft. So it's just a thought. I just want to throw that out there, though. But, yeah, hopefully, man, you know, the Bears can get what they need for the team. You know what I'm saying? If that scenario don't happen, though, then I can see us just going here and say, hey, we'll get Caleb Williams and we trade that number nine, you know, and we try to go to five and pull off. And let's say we try to get Marvin Harris or a top receiver or defensive end with that number uh, five pick as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a good scenario. It was just a thought, so I wanted to put that out there to you. You know what I'm saying? As far as, like, what if the Chargers decide to call the Bears and say, hey, we want that number more raw pick. What, what we got to give y'all for? And, and, and Brian Post hit them with a counter and say, hey, give, give me, you know what I'm saying, a first, you know, maybe a second, and Justin Herbert in return. You know what I'm saying? So it was just a kind of effect that me and my neighbors have, and I'm saying, hey, it, it don't sound bad because if that do happen and we ended up with uh, Justin Herbert, if there's automatically a contender, you know what I'm saying, with Justin Herbert, we automatically, you know, 3-13 and 13 or whatever, you know what I'm saying, the record may be, though. So it was just a thought, and I just want to know what your thought on it, though, man. So let me know what you think, man. Chicago up, bad down or nothing. Let's get it. This is our year. I'll let you. All right, uh, you, Fred, you already know I love you, brother. Like, you're one of the best, one of the biggest and most consistent supporters of Chicago Bears Central. But, bro, you have literally been trying to come up with ways for the Bears to trade this number one overall pick still since they traded Justin. And I think the signs are just there, brother. They're holding on to Justin Fields. I truly think those signs are there, bro. That they're going to, that they're going to, not holding on to Justin Fields. I'm sorry, holding on to the number one pick to hold, to, to draft Caleb Williams. I said Justin Fields. I got my tongue tied there. Um, And I think that's just what it is, bro. And I get it. Like I said, I, I don't want to take anything away from from your doubt around it, your your questions around it. I think I all those things are absolutely legit, Fred. But I think when it comes down to it, the Bears ain't didn't do what they did for no damn Justin Herbert. They did it for Caleb Williams. And that's who they plan on bringing in here, bro. And I think that's what it comes down to. I don't think the Bears are really entertaining anything else. I know that that's been floated around by about the Justin Herbert thing. I just don't think it's going to happen. The Bears are drafting Caleb Williams, and they're looking to keep forward, and they're looking to push forward with Caleb, and that's what they're looking to do. We will see. Now, with number nine, I don't know, bro, what they're going to do with number nine for sure. Uh, it kind of goes back and forth per each report each day, um, but the Bears are going to have a lot at their disposal, and even if they do just hold on to number nine, draft Romo Dunze, I think that they can't go wrong with that one, with pairing their new rookie quarterback with a wideout who can grow his game alongside of him. So. That's my thought process there. Great voicemail as always, Fred. Let's get into this next one. This one's from Darius. What's going on, guys? Darius from Dallas here. I just had some uh, thoughts on the wide, re wide receiver uh, prospects. I, it's, a, it's such a deep draft, man. <clears throat> I feel like we can really just wait uh, to the second round. Like, let's just, at number nine, let's just go with the best pass rush that's available because we're going to need that. Because this draft is really deep. I mean, hell, Keenan Allen was a fourth round pick. Uh, this draft is really deep, man. We can go get somebody like a, a Kenny Pearsall from Florida or that kid from, uh, Georgia, uh, McConkey, somebody that's a good route runner that's just going to be a primary, like, good slot guy. Like what, uh, what Brady had with Wes Welker and Edelman. That bailout guy that can, you know, do those little 10 yard quick slants or whatever and just, just free up and be a bail, a uh, little bailout piece for the quarterback, man. I think that'll be beneficial. Um, and I, I think that's probably the best way to go, man, as far as filling all of our needs. I mean, the best way that we can with the four picks that we have. So we got to really utilize it and squeeze every bit of juice out of this berry, so to speak. So 
I think we need to, if we just go pass rush, because that's going to be the missing piece for our defense, that's going to help Caleb. Uh, you know, of course, if, if Joe Alt is there, which I don't think he will be, you go ahead and get him. Uh, but I don't think that wide receiver position just, ha- I don't think you have to go Roma Dunze. This is such a talented draft for wide receivers, man. We can pick somebody up in the second or in the third, uh, that might end up being just a good slot receiver. But if we do go Roma Dunze, what would y'all think about taking DJ Moore and making him the slot? Uh, I think he's, he's built forward. He's fit forward. That'd be kind of hard to guard across the middle. Uh, and then just keeping a Dunze on the outside, Keenan Allen on the other. All right, let me know what y'all think about that. Check us up and bear down. All right, Darius. Uh, listen, much, I, I, and I get what you're saying, um, but there are also some talented edges that you can get later in this draft as well. I think when it comes down to it, just to be 100% honest with you, brother, um, if Romo Dunze's there, I, I again, he's better than a lot of the other wide receivers. Yes, you can still get some talented wide receivers down there. And like you said with Keenan Allen, he, was a, 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 he wasn't a first or a second round pick, but fourth round pick, I think. You can absolutely get that in. If Ryan Poles and the team do their due diligence, uh, you know, that's, I think, even when you think of them looking out at Xavier Worthy, who's more like a second round than, than a fourth round. But there are absolutely some guys that can go later on in this draft that can still be stud wideouts at the NFL level, right? I look at Jalen uh, Polk out of Washington. That's a guy who uh, is sh- a little bit shorter, but I think he, uh, especially as a slot, got a lot that he can bring. But I think Romo Dunze is going to be the pick if he's there. I think kind of signs are pointing to that. But, again, that doesn't mean anything because things can change. Now, as far as the slot position, here's what I'll say. Under Shane Waldron, I think you're going to see all guys line up. I don't think you're going to see DJ Moore exclusively at the slot, but I think you're going to see some matchups with DJ in the slot, with Rome in the slot, with Keenan Allen in the slot, because that's how creative Shane Waldron can get with his offense to try to get people the ball. And I think that that's better than having just somebody just you're only a slot wide receiver. I think the fact that he's going to, he's going to let the matchups and the weaknesses of that team kind of determine that but yeah, DJ Moore can be effective anywhere he's going to be. But I think you're going to see uh, the slot by committee in a lot of ways. You're going to see a lot of those wide receivers line up at the slot to give kind of the best look, depending on what's going on in any given situation. And to me, that's the best thing that you can look for, in my opinion. All right, let's get into the last voicemail. This one's from Book. Yo, 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 Hayes, what's good, man? This Book, man, blessings to you and yours. Man, I got to tell you, I'm excited about this season, man. I'm looking forward to it, but I got to tell you one thing. I've been listening to a lot of different podcasts and catching clips of uh, the shows on TV because I really don't watch a whole lot of cable. I'm going to tell you like this. When the Bears take off, I don't want no cub from none of them. I don't want nobody to big them up. I don't want nobody to talk positive. I want them to keep that same bravado and all the stuff, people talking stuff about the Bears. Especially Joy Taylor, man. I, man, I can't stand her, man. She said, up, it's the Bears. Every time somebody say something, but it's the Bears. It's 30 years. I'm like, man, that's the past. Whole different regime is running stuff now, man. People with sense. People with common sense. People with football sense. So I want everybody to keep that same bravado. Keep it, please. Don't try to jump on the bandwagon when the bandwagon take off because you're going to end up on the floor because we're going to zip right by you. Please keep that same energy. But that's all I wanted to say, man. Again, bless to you and yours. Shout out to Familiars, um, Marifa. Shout out to, all, you know, everybody else. Chicago up, bear down, man. Everybody have a good weekend, man, and enjoy the swept. Listen, I completely hear you on the national media, bro. You guys already know the national media. They're going to change their tune. And here's the thing. It is what it is, bro. Like, at this point, I don't, I don't look at you. See, I very rarely talk unless they come out with something ridiculous about the national media here on this show because – Listen, their job is now to sensationalize. Their job is to find the story. And like I said earlier, they don't give a damn about Kayla Williams. They didn't give a damn about Justin Fields. They don't give a damn about the Chicago Bears. They give a damn about the story, and they're going to follow the story. And if the Bears do start winning and they're pu- pu- pushing for that playoff spot and they start beating some of these teams that they didn't think the Bears could beat and start looking like a much better team, they're absolutely going to jump on the bandwagon. And they're going to ride that out as long as they can and go to the next hot thing. That's just what the national media is at this point. But that's why it's good that you have people that are involved and love the team first rather than the story that then follow and give and give uh, their, their time for content and things for this team. And that's the most important thing, I think, as well. But all right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bear Central at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, and that's thanks to you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, Die Town Up, but Bear Down. Love you guys. 
Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.